and I'm I'm happy to talk about whatever people want to talk about. But um, business the business for the meeting is to sort of go through uh, the Anvil release, uh, and then uh, we'll we'll open it up to questions or things like that. I'm, I'm trying to figure out. There's a couple of process things I want to cover, um, and there's some uh, work I'm I'm trying to get through on the Dell side. Uh, that hopefully will be the subject for next week's community meeting. Uh, Dell sometimes moves more slowly than I would like for things like this. Okay. Uh, so from uh, so the purpose of the day is to, to officially do the release. We might have to wait until the afternoon or evening to actually do the release tags um, because we have there's two pending pull requests out there. Uh, let me bring them up. Let's see pull request. So uh, I was able to get 100% passing on the BDD tests, um, which is an important milestone because I want to enter this release with the contract of commits don't break, uh, don't regress BDD coverage. And then the other thing I was able to do was collapse all the migrations into a single migration. Uh, but when we a couple of weeks ago we had talked about um, the release milestones and pulling things together for the release. Uh, and we'd identified uh, this uh, concept of a dot release moving to quarterly, a quarterly set. So the idea here was that uh, the Open Crowbar platform itself had a lot of stuff in it. It has the annealer, which is our orchestration engine, which is focused on being able to do the type of orchestration you need for a bare metal discovered infrastructure. Uh, it's a different problem space than a cloud deployment. Probably could be used that way, but our, our focus is really on dealing with discovered infrastructure. Because um, I like to talk about it and say the word Docker. Docker effectively becomes discovered infrastructure because uh, it doesn't have all the uh, control points that a VM or a physical machine does. So you have to, there's, there's sort of a hybrid thing. So what we had done is uh, we'd identified a whole bunch of, of feature capabilities. If you go way back in the time machine, um, these tie back to, I wonder if I can easily do that. Um, it's worth doing. Um, Yeah, so in, in um <laughs> so when we kicked off for the uh open the V two of Open Crowbar two years ago at OSCON, um almost two years ago, uh we identified a lot of requirements, capabilities and things we wanted to accomplish. Um we didn't even have a con the, con the concept of the annealer and some of the things we've done like jigs were design objectives, but um we didn't. We we hadn't completed the design, and so there's actually a considerable amount of material. Uh, I'll link that in, into this page um, about what we wanted to accomplish uh, in hours of video, uh, talking about networking models, online mode, pull from source, uh, heterogeneous operating systems using attribute-driven recipes, um, and technical debt that we wanted to pay down. And if you go back. Um, If you go back and, and look through this document in some detail, what you would find is that we have accomplished those objectives. Um, and it's worth, as a release celebration, talking about some of what these are, right? So um, we needed to clean up our, our the community debt that we had, um, which we've done by moving into one core into one repo and making it eliminating dev tool. Uh, we have heterogeneous operating system deployment. This is actually a significantly complex thing because it requires you to be able to pull dependencies for, for your deployments um, from a wide range of things, which required us to change the networking model and have, an, have online mode. Um, and actually, one of the things that we've been doing is embedding squid proxy so that uh, the online mode actually doesn't hit the internet as much. It, it brings in things as it needs it. Um, significant amount of uh, complexity in, in making this a reality. Um, I'm really excited about that. Uh, being able to use Chef or Puppet, 
uh, we actually have the, sh the puppet client is in, although it, it's very uh, immature at this point compared to our chef capability. Um, so that was a major deliverable for this, this release. Um, online mode, which means that we, we use the internet instead of having everything packaged into an ISO. ISO is tremendously useful for doing disconnected installs, which are very common, um, and we'll have to put that feature back. But it also was incredibly limiting because that way if you fixed a cookbook and it pulled in a new dependency, you were stuck in the old model. And so we, we had to address that. It's a serious, serious problem um, or a limitation. Uh, ability to use upstream co de uh, deployment code sources. This was effectively our, our part of our online caching strategy, but Crowbar, uh, Open Crowbar was uh, one of the recent ads was to use Berkshelf. And so all of the uh, chef dependencies can be housed and maintained outside of Crowbar, which is really important to us because using the chef upstreams for, say, OpenStack are really the target here. We don't want to do what we did with Crowbar 1 and create islands of uh, cookbooks. We want to be fully in the community cookbooks. And that also required adoption of attribute injection, um, which I don't have in here, although it was a design, a design requirement. Um, to be able to fully embrace the attribute injection model that is the, the most popular. Um, and that, in turn, lets us do things like the annealer, which creates these very atomic roles. Um, and so uh, I think the, the annealer wasn't one of our design objectives. It's a critical feature. Um, we actually discussed whether or not it should be in, in this, and it is down here uh, as a baseline. So significant capability that was delivered in this release was the, this annealer, the orchestration, the whole proving out that model, um, and showing that it could do very flexible things like build a cluster, the way we demonstrated with Ceph, or have two different execution paths like we had to do to make it work for Docker. Um, that's a really tricky orchestration challenge. Um, and then doing it in a way that you could actually do an upgrade around it and, and heal it and deal with all the contingencies of discovered hardware. Um, they're really important capabilities. Uh, scale to 100 nodes, a flexible networking configuration is something we actually have had for a long time in the Open Crowbar work, um, getting away from that whole network JSON, letting you define roles. Um, even more importantly in this, we actually uh, networks are roles in part of the dependency graph. So, uh, in Open Crowbar, we made it so that your network, uh, you could actually stage your uh, orchestration and your graph based on your network. And since we do late binding, that graph uh, can't, isn't, you know, your network doesn't exist until you create it uh, based on what your needs are. So uh, we're, we're very flexible about how that works. That's a really important uh, thing. It's not hard to conceptualize. You, basically can't start doing a deployment until you build a network. The thing that's interesting is it's a directed graph deployment. That graph isn't built until the deployment starts, uh, unlike a lot of the other ways I've seen directed graph orchestration done where you have to build the full orchestration right from the start. Um, and then scale to 100 nodes, the, our Docker, the Docker work we've been doing let us really work focus on this. And so um, I'm very confident we could scale well beyond 100 nodes. What we've actually been testing is basically is a hundred node simultaneous deployment. So cramming a hundred nodes into the system as fast as they can possibly go, and we've been using uh, our Docker infrastructure to test that hundred node bring up. Um, so we are incredibly confident about hundred node scale and beyond, um, and provably a hundred node, which is good. Um, and then, phew, wow. Um, that's a big, that's a lot. <laughs> uh, and then the technical debt we had was, was considerable also. So we've, we've got everything in the latest versions. Uh, we've moved all the documentation into the repo. So we couldn't clean up the history easily with all the Crowbar 1 stuff, especially because uh, SUSE is very active with uh, Crowbar 1, and it was making it very difficult to distinguish which docs are for what. So uh, separating them was really a much more logical thing. And so we've been keeping the documentation in the code, not in a wiki, uh, not distributed all over the place. Uh, and so far, I think that's been really powerful. We still have a long way to go. Uh, I feel like anybody who says their docs are complete, misleading. <laughs> you either stop writing code or, uh, or 
very has more doc people than they than I've ever seen. Uh, and then repos converged in Berkshelf. Um, so all of we had this bar clamp concept. We still have it in uh, Open Crowbar, but we don't have 20,000 bar clamps all over the place driving driving us crazy. So um, all of OpenStack, all of Ceph, all of Hadoop, all of the hardware, uh, those are in their own GitHubs because they version together. But their individual parts are just one thing. So it makes it so much more logical and easy to track. It means we can use Git in a normal way uh, because each repo represents a dependency bundle. Uh, RESTful API normalization, we've done a lot on the API. The CLI has been normalized. Um, it's actually really nice. Uh, I encourage people to look at that. VDD test coverage, um, we, we've had this. I just, I'd let it slip and now it's back. That's one of the release criteria for me. Uh, because this effectively makes sure that nobody regresses the API calls. We, we really have very good API coverage and pretty good UI coverage on the, on the PTP suites. Um, multiple deployment technologies, this is Chef and Puppet, it's a little redundant. And then, um, and then uh, we have orchestration, uh, uh, and this, this is Daniel, I've already talked about that. So that's that's pretty much the key features of the release. I, I don't think I'm missing any. I'll pause for questions. Yeah. Go, you're the only one I know on. So does that make sense? No, no um, you know, so far so good. So Okay. You know, I, this you know, is, I'm waiting for all the OpenStack stuff so I can deploy stuff up here. So. Right. And that's actually, that's a great tee up for what the, what the next what the next piece is. So the idea here is that now that we've covered the base and we've we've done some OpenStack work and to sort of test out the concepts, but now that we've covered the base, um, it's really time to focus on workloads. We we don't expect the broom release uh, to have significant changes in arch architectural changes. It's mostly going to be bug fix and clean up <coughs> based on what we discover, um, and that's. Um, actually, some of the we actually pulled ahead some of the Docker containers as workloads should let us uh, work on OpenStack more quickly, um, more more community accessible. In place upgrade we is now something we need to test. Um, RAID and BIOS capabilities are something that we're we're looking. Um, there's some architectural work that was done. I'm always looking for feedback here. Um, so the original design with Crowbar on the, we actually, I'm going to have a separate room release planning session, which I think is the right thing, after the summit. Um, but the thing that we're looking at is the annealer can deal with out-of-band uh, actions. So from a uh, server configuration perspective, it makes a lot of sense to be able to do uh, IDRAC calls directly from the annealer rather than do it like we did with Crowbar 1, which would do it in situ. So in Crowbar 1, we actually go into the Sledgehammer discovery image and we act in that image on the system itself. Um, if we use uh, our series gear for Dell, then we actually have to network tunnel back out to the IDRAX interface, which is actually less secure. Um, if we're doing C series gear, we do it. It on the system itself, because that's the only way to configure the C-Series gear. Um, our assessment was that we actually wanted to start with the out-of-band and not try to support the C-Series gear on the first pass, um, because that positions us better to be able to do things like uh, HP ILO, or have the community do HP ILO, would be the way to say it, um, or any other out-of-band infrastructure. Um, which could conceivably include network configurations and things like that. So um, we could be the way the fastest, you know, that, that seemed like the most uh, architecturally uh, significant way to approach the problem. Um, did you have a All right. Um, so that, this is this is all all to be TBD stuff. We feel like this is a really significant 
uh, piece to bring up. I think the RAID controller oh, RAID can be, be configured by remote, so we'll look at that. Uh, and I'm hoping that we're going to see some community, now that we've simplified the model, more community contri contribution to expand the breadth of hardware capabilities that are covered. Um, and then the other thing that we're looking at doing, uh, we've built some infrastructure at Dell, although I, I think we're going to be moving it to a community, to a cloud-based infrastructure, but just be able to, to install Crowbar and run the gate so that we actually have a gated check-in process. Um, and then I'm not quite ready to talk through Camshaft, but the idea with Camshaft, you know, we, have, we have roadmap leading forward in Camshaft that um, is going to take, so Broom is all about workloads. Camshaft will probably come back into doing some crowbar enhancements and looking at that, um, including, really importantly, uh, learning what we want to do from the UI and creating some, some UI that, that is more um, uh, easy, just just a little bit, you know, not as many steps. Uh, we, we actually chose not to try and make do, do too much in the UI because we, we wanted to get some more experience. So that's that's the roadmap going forward. Uh, all right. Cool. Um, oh, and from a schedule perspective, I, I, I'm expecting to have a meeting next week, uh, and then uh, we'll take the OpenStack Summit off, and then I'd, I'd like to go back after the OpenStack Summit and probably have another meeting and start talking about OpenStack migration, because uh, I think it'll be time at that at that point. Um, and then this is I'm about to release this to the list and also through my blog uh, talking about some of what, what's been going on. This is effectively the same thing as what I just talked about, um, but making, making the release official uh, minus the tag going in those last two polls. Uh, I am not going to read this out loud, but I'll put it on the screen. Comments, questions? <coughs> um, no, not really. Okay. So, I, I'm, you're going to be in the summit. Maybe we can hook up, Rob, and just have a five-minute chat one time. I would love to do that, Gil. That, yeah, that would like, be... Yeah. I'd like to explain more to you exactly what it is I'm up to, and maybe we, you know, to sync up the scheduling a little bit better, see when I can get Crowbar in here to do my, to do an OpenStack prototype. You know what I'm saying? That makes a lot of sense. Let's um, sync up at the summit, and we can discuss it. Um, okay. And then, and we'll figure out. I, I, I understand we have we have a lot of people in the community who uh, want to make sure that they're 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 working in their intent. That, you know, and these are open calls, and we record them. So I'm I'm perfectly cool to talk one on one. Figure out where we're going. Yeah. Very very, very common happens all the time. Okay. Um, so uh, with that, I wouldn't expect to see a lot of action uh, in, the next, in the next couple of days. Uh, I know myself and a lot of the people on the team are, are completely focused on the OpenStack Summit. Um, oh, one thing that is worth discussing, though, um, is that we, we are planning to be uh, active in the triple O, ironic, um, all that stuff. I actually I have... Uh, some opinions about that work, uh, and we're we're going to talk. We're going to go there and see if we can influence um, the direction on that. Uh, I'm very. I'm getting a little off topic, but this is useful. Um, so one of the things I've I tried to do is uh, define this this concept called ready state infrastructure, uh, which effectively means, and, and it's, it's really convenient, <laughs> the choice of words is, is not accidental. Uh, ready, the ready state, um, ready state infrastructure aligns with what we call ready, would be a ready state in Crowbar as from a deployment. So a deployment is annealed. When it's done annealing, it's ready. Um, but as I talked to different people, um, uh, you know, it seemed like the concept of saying, all right, Crowbar gets your infrastructure to a ready state seem very logical. Um, and so one of the, the things to discuss and think about at the, at the summit is can we use Crowbar to get 
uh, OpenStack infra infrastructure to a ready state to install OpenStack on. And then if, if the community really wants to use Heat to do that OpenStack installment on top of the ready infrastructure, I think that's actually very attainable. Um, because at that point, and what I spelt, what I tried to spell out in this blog post, was once you have a ready state, you're 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 much more discovered and controlled, and you don't have to deal with as much variation. Getting to a ready state, it's a different architectural problem, and I I, I try to walk that through. So, um, if if you have concerns about some of the the, the challenges that that OpenStack is trying to face by taking a cloud infrastructure provisioning an orchestration system, a, a cloud infrastructure provisioning system and APIs, and applying it to a, a different problem space, which is bare metal bring up. Um, I'm hoping this concept is useful for people to actually identify the problem, uh, and because I, I believe very strongly they're, they're two different problem spaces um, and different arc, different, with different architectural challenges. Uh, so, you know, please, please, if you if you want to discuss that at the summit, I'm hoping this will help with the dialogue. Is really the thing I'm I'm trying to get us talking about the right stuff. Um, yeah, I have to read your blog. <coughs> oh. uh, I I'd love feedback on this. I've I've really found it is, um, and this this goes back. I've I've got series about these things. I've really found it's. Uh, hard for people to distinguish sometimes about the challenges that they get into in physical infrastructure uh, because really a lot of people don't do that much operations um, and so they, they miss the complexities of uh, network configuration things like that and stuff that has to get uh, but you know very manageable Cool. We just had somebody new join. If, uh, if you want to chime in, you're welcome to. We're actually getting close to wrapping the call. Of, we are officially uh, cutting the annual release for Open Crowbar, and then um, we're just talking <laughs> discussion topics for the summit. Then with that, I, I think I'm just going to declare uh, Anvil the Anvil released and uh, wrap up the call. All right, everybody. I appreciate appreciate you all being on. Uh, we're going to cut the tag time today, and I'm, I'm going to start posting some blogs about it. Thank you. Exciting. Big day. I'm going to go celebrate.